Yeah, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are very sorry that uh, it will take another two, three minutes because our president is connecting. Uh, uh, there is a power cut, as you know, that there are some issues uh, these days, right? So please uh, bear with us for another two, three minutes.
uh, engineer sahabandu shall we start yeah we can start it now yeah yeah thank you very much uh, good evening everybody uh, uh, this is our second uh, geo forum of this year 2022 uh, to officially uh, welcome the presenter to this uh, presentation i would like to invite engineer kls sahabandu to make a brief introduction about the author, about the presenter thank you uh, good evening everyone welcome to your forum of uh, uh, 2022 february uh, this is a monthly event geotechnical society has uh, uh, launched so many years back and uh, every month we try to uh, get this lecture organized for the benefit of our members as well as the public. And also we normally invite eminent personnel who is uh, contributed in this field <clears throat> to share their knowledge with our members as well as public. Today our resource person is Dr. Eli Nalindi Silla, <clears throat> who is a senior lecturer attached to the Department of Civil Engineering of the University of Morotua since 2009. He got his bachelor degree from the University of Morotua with first class honors in 2001 and obtained his master's and PhD from University of Tokyo in 2004 and 2008 respectively. He is a corporate member of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka and a member of the Sri Lankan Geotechnical Society and the International Society of Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering. He served as the editor uh, newsletter in Sri, Lankan, Sri Lanka Geotechnical Society in many years. He has over 12 years experience as a geotechnical engineer and he has been providing his services as geotechnical consultant for major construction projects in Sri Lanka and overseas. He has published many technical papers in the conference in Sri Lanka and overseas and also worked as a resource person in many workshops, training programs and seminars. He is a holder of the National Patent Right of Post Sensor with Cross Beam Structure for Earth Pressure Measurement. His National Patent is LKP 270. With that brief introduction, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Nalin Tisilla to make his presentation. Uh, Podium is Thank you, Engineer Sahabandu, uh, for your very uh, uh, in, uh, this informative uh, introduction about myself. So, uh, since I have a, I am experiencing a power cut. Uh, let me close my video and uh, do the presentation to save uh, some. Uh, battery life of my computer hello can you all see my uh Yes, Dr. Nalin, we can see you. We can yes. see the presentation. Yes. Right. So, uh, good evening to all of you uh, and welcome to uh, the SLGS Geo Forum. Uh, this is uh, uh, the two day uh, lecture series, uh, and the first day uh, of the lecture will be focused on uh, the construction and uh, analysis design, design aspects uh, related to uh, deep excavation. Uh, so this will be, uh, I mean, uh, basically I am focusing on uh, the construction issues, how to select an appropriate uh, type of uh, deep excavation support system, uh, what are the methods available for analysis and design. Uh, and uh, in the second day I am planning to uh, discuss about dewatering aspects and most importantly monitoring and contingency plans in case of unexpected uh, uh, events then uh, some quality assurance and safety aspects will also be discussed in the second day so uh, with that uh, let me start my presentation so this is this is the content uh, so today i am going to uh, talk about 
uh, the different types of uh, excavation support systems uh, and uh, the criteria for selecting different types of support systems what are the methods available for analysis and design and I will be uh, presenting some uh, tools uh, that will be really useful in, in planning stage. I am not going to go into the details of analysis and design that is not the scope of this presentation so but I will be explaining some uh, useful tools uh, that can be incorporated with monitoring records uh, uh, in the planning and construction stage to ensure the safety of deep excavation. So these two sections will be covered uh, today uh, and the remaining three sections will be covered in the next uh, day. So uh, let me start with uh, an introduction. Uh, the deep excavations are generally classified as the excavations deeper than six meters. So uh, excavations uh, less than six meter uh, we, I, we can either support them using open cut excavations uh, uh, that means excavation without any lateral support so the excavation has to be cut at a safe angle to prevent uh, the failure modes given uh, here. Uh, the different modes of failure for open cut types excavations are presented here so I am not going to go into the details. Uh, then uh, so let me start with uh, open cut uh, type excavations. Uh, some general guidelines are presented here. I took these guidelines from uh, uh, Occupational Safety and Health uh, Division of uh, North Carolina Department of Labor USA. Some uh, nice guidelines are available on open cut type excavation. Uh, the soil uh, types are classified into three categories as uh, type A, B, C as uh, shown in the left hand side. So different soil classes or so types are uh, classified. Uh, the type A uh, for, uh, is uh, mainly stiff clay type soils. Type C is mainly sandy or gravel type soils without any uh, cohesion. And uh, type B falls into uh, the soils that are in between. For these uh, three types of categories and you can see the uh, approximate SPT values are also given for uh, the types of uh, soils. For uh, the different uh, categories, uh, the uh, acceptable slopes are given here. And this, uh, these guidelines can be used if there are no structures uh, on the top of the excavation. Uh, uh, if the excavation is not done in a residential area, so these general guidelines can be uh, effectively used. So uh, if there are uh, different layers, the same guideline uh, provides uh, general uh, specifications. Uh, when you have uh, say uh, a type B soil over type A, type A over type B and so on. So different uh, the layers. Uh, layered soils, the uh, uh, the uh, specified slope angles for open cut excavations are presented in, uh, in the guidelines. So then I would like to move into uh, the uh, different excavation support systems. Uh, the <coughs> so there are several types of embedded walls are used to support deep excavation. Uh, the the criteria for selection. Uh, mainly depend on uh, the uh, area of excavation, the, the ground condition, ground water table uh, and the uh, allowable uh, deformation of the wall and uh, the expect, uh, anticipated settlement uh, of the retained site uh, of the excavation. Then one major uh, consideration is the availability of the construction equipment and cost then uh, one more important aspect is the water tightness. So by considering this, uh, we can select uh, different uh, types of uh, the uh, embedded type retaining walls. So uh, uh, some options for uh, the selection of the different types of embedded type retaining walls are presented here. Uh, I, I will be briefly going through uh, these uh, uh, 
the different types of embedded retaining walls for your information uh, just for completeness and some will be uh, explained in detail uh, because uh, some techniques are quite new and novel uh, to Sri Lanka. So uh, let me start with the sold uh, the applicability of uh, these uh, different types of uh, uh, the uh, ex the uh, excavation support systems for different conditions. Uh, this table presents uh, the available uh, different uh, types of uh, deep excavation support systems uh, and, and their applicability for different excavation heights. Uh, so in gen in gen generally uh, the, uh, the uh, excavation support system can be maintained as a cantilever uh, uh, excavation uh, if the excavation height is for say for example less than about 5 meters. So excavations greater than about 5 meters need to be supported, propped or anchored and depending on uh, the groundwater conditions, uh, we have to select the appropriate uh, the uh, the type. So uh, this table can be used uh, as a guideline for the selection of the appropriate uh, uh, the type of uh, excavation support system. Uh, let me start with uh, the solder pile walls. Uh, the solder pile walls are very widely used uh, and uh, in the solder pile systems, uh, steel eye sections or uh, uh, sometimes uh, the uh, railway, uh, what you call uh, the uh, uh, the steel eye sections and uh, the, the uh, uh, other types of like uh, precast type of uh, leggings are also used for. Uh, uh, solder pile retaining walls uh, and uh, in some cases uh, if the excavation depth is large uh, these walls are anchored and different lagging uh, options are given here in some cases the uh, the eye sections are embedded in soil uh, and in some cases uh, the eye sections are exposed so uh, different lagging options are also there Then comes uh, the sheet piles uh, and sheet piles uh, sometimes we have to uh, in, in case of hard driving conditions we may have to use uh, jetting or pre-drilling uh, to assist the, uh, the uh, installation. The, uh, the corner connections are also uh, given here so I am not going to go into the details of this. Uh, then comes the, contigu uh, the continuous, uh, contiguous pile walls and secant pile walls. Uh, uh, let me spend some time here because uh, in the contiguous board pile walls where groundwater control is uh, uh, has to be considered, the uh, grout piles are constructed behind uh, the contiguous board pile walls to arrest any uh, seepage through the wall. Uh, and secant pile walls Second pile walls, uh, as you know, uh, uh, they are kind of interlock. Uh, the primary piles are first installed, and then uh, the secondary piles, which are reinforced, uh, generally reinforced, are installed. Uh, and depending on uh, the selection of primary and secondary piles, uh, we have hard to hard to hard uh, type second piles and uh, hard to soft type C compiles. In hard to soft type C compiles, this kind of uh, C compile walls are suitable in uh, relatively stiff soils uh, because this uh, the primary pile consists of cement, sa sand, bentonite mix. Uh, so it's not uh, very stiff. So that is why it is called hard to soft uh, C compile technique. <coughs> uh, one of the major problem in uh, C compile walls is the loss of overcut at great depths. So uh, most of the second pile failures are due to this because uh, uh, generally for second piles uh, a, a, the, an inclination a tolerance of about 1 to 75 is, uh, is allowed. So uh, there can be a situation where at great uh, large depths the overcut is lost. 
uh, and uh, the gaps are exposed. So if uh, the subsurface condition is sandy and the groundwater table is high, uh, the seepage can take place through the wall. So uh, that has to be uh, considered in uh, selecting uh, the second pile walls. So most of the, the second pile wall failures I have seen are due to this uh, problem. So generally speaking, if the, uh, the uh, water table is high and the depth of excava uh, excavation is more than let's say 7 or 8 meters, and the subsurface consists of sandy soil, better to avoid second piles, so that is my uh, advice. So our uh, different fecal pine uh, configurations, uh, typical details are given here, so I am not going to go into the details. Uh, I will share this presentation with you, so you can keep it as a reference in case. So uh, the first two are uh, like heart to heart type uh, second pile typical details. First, in, in the first one only uh, the secondary piles are reinforced. In the second case, both primary and secondary piles are uh, reinforced. The the, uh, the primary piles are in, in case steel in case. <coughs> so uh, the last two are hard to soft type uh, second piles, second pile walls. <coughs> then comes uh, to uh, the diaphragm walls. Uh, so in the di uh, diaphragm wall, the construction technique is uh, quite simple and it is now widely used in, to support deep ex excavations in Sri Lanka. So you have to have a guide wall. Guide wall, uh, it is uh, sometimes masonry uh, guide walls are used in some uh, cases. Precast uh, concrete guide walls are also used. Uh, then uh, you have to excavate a panel and the panel uh, has to be supported, the excavation has to be supported using uh, a slurry, using uh, uh, the drilling mud, bentonite is used. Then two stock pens are used, With these two stock pens are generally equipped with some uh, uh, water bars to uh, arrest the seepage uh, through the joints and then this panel is concreted panel is concreted and the same procedure is repeated for uh, the different panels. These water, uh, the, the stock pens can be either steel tubes, precast elements and so on. Different configurations are there. So I would like to uh, show you some available uh, uh, the water stoppers. Uh, the, uh, the consistency of the drilling fluid is given here, that's quite similar to the, the consistency of uh, bentonite during uh, piling. And uh, according to IC specifications, it is recommended to use a single uh, tremi for uh, panels less than 3.6 meter in length. Two uh, tremies are recommended for panels between 3.6 to 7.2 uh, meters. Uh, in length. Uh, these are the connections, different connections available, uh, typical uh, details. Uh, in the first, uh, the top left hand uh, figure, you can see a, a steel uh, stop pen is used. Uh, the excavation is carried out, cage is inserted and then that part is concreted. After that, uh, the stop pen is removed and the same procedure is uh, is applied for the the adjacent panel. Uh, and in the second case, the precast elements, precast elements with uh, you can see water bars are used as uh, the stop pen. So in this case, the stop pen is not removed. This will become part of the uh, the diaphragm wall. It becomes permanent uh, uh, part of the diaphragm mode. Uh, likewise, different uh, the uh, connection details are available. So, uh, so in Sri Lanka, this is uh, very widely used. Uh, you can see a typical uh, stop pen used in uh, for most of the diaphragm walls in Sri Lanka. In this case, two uh, water bars are used. 
but uh, most of the cases in Sri Lanka we are using uh, a single water bar so this part will be embedded in concrete and uh, once uh, the panel is cast the stop pen is removed and you can see the exposed uh, uh, part of the water bar and the, this part will be concreted uh, next So uh, some more details on uh, the stop pens are shown here. Uh, then uh, this this is quite new to Sri Lanka. I have never I have not seen uh, prefabricated diaphragm walls in Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, and prefabricated diaphragm walls uh, are precast. It consists of precast segments and uh, the uh, the the trench is filled with cement bentonite slurry so this cement bentonite slurry will uh, it will be hardened with time and it creates a, a, a barrier for seepage so no stop i mean additional stop pens are required in this case because this cement bentonite slurry itself will act as the the water stopper so uh, the the length up of the 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 prefabricated element actually depends on uh, the uh, the structural capacity okay uh, in some cases 40 meter the uh, uh, long sections have been reported in the in the other parts of the world and uh, anchor uh, segments can be positioned very uh, quite accurately during the installation time so uh, minimum dis with the minimum disturbance we can install the uh, the prefabricated uh, elements and one uh, one of the biggest advantage uh, of using uh, prefabricated diaphragm walls is the is the ability to control the thickness because uh, these uh, these segments are uh, cast uh, in a yard under control conditions so it is uh, uh, mentioned that the thickness or the width of a precast diaphragm wall is generally 30% smaller than uh, the thickness of uh, the cast in situ diaphragm walls. And the water tightness is also much better compared to cast uh, in place uh, diaphragm walls. And uh, one of the biggest advantage uh, of using uh, precast diaphragm walls is the ability to post tension uh, these elements. So post tension uh, diaphragm walls are also being used. The cable profile uh, has to be designed, so a lot of uh, structural detailing has to be done, considering uh, the the level of supports uh, and other uh, lateral support, uh, lateral earth pressure, and so on. We have to design the tendon profile <coughs> uh, so this will uh, the the use of post tension diaphragm walls will uh, uh, i mean further reduce uh, the uh, the thickness uh, of the uh, the conventional uh, cast in place diaphragm wall uh, then comes top down constructions uh, top down constructions are also used uh, to support deep excavations uh, the uh, uh, top down constructions are quite suitable uh, if uh, the soil is relatively stiff and uh, water uh, table is uh, quite low or the permeability is quite uh, small like uh, stiff clay type of soils this kind of uh, top down constructions are suitable uh, you have to excavate uh, uh, carry out a free excavation vertical free excavation up to about 1 to 1.5 meters so soil must be stable uh, up to that uh, depth then we can install the precast elements or you can uh, the, uh, support this by cast in place concrete and uh, these elements can be appropriately propped or anchored and uh, stage wise we can carry out the uh, excavation 
the soil nail walls are also uh, get, getting uh, popular nowadays uh, the one uh, soil nail supported uh, deep excavation is currently uh, I'm, I'm involved in one uh, in uh, candy uh, so uh, the uh, the anchors are normal soil nails uh, and uh, the facing can be uh, either like normal uh, soil nail facing or sometimes micro piles are also used as the facing the caissons are actually uh, mainly used as a foundation uh, I mean uh, these caissons are uh, very rarely used as an excavation support system uh, but the, there are cases where caissons have been used to support uh, the deep excavation this is again a, a top down uh, construction uh, and uh, pneumatic caissons are used uh, for carrying out excavation under water so there is a pressure chamber so uh, uh, people are working in the uh, under the pressure chamber and uh, the pressure air pressure inside the pressure chamber is larger than the uh, water pressure so that will prevent water from entering into the excavation so people have to work under high pressure conditions so there are a lot of safety uh, concerns and it is very labor intensive because people can't work for more than one or two hours inside this high pressure uh, chambers so uh, they have to provide airlocks uh, and a lot of safety uh, I mean features are to be adhered uh, and it is quite labor intensive therefore these uh, the caissons are not very widely used nowadays but uh, they were very popular in 1920-30s uh, and and uh, in some cases jet grouting uh, and uh, deep cement mixing is also used to support uh, deep excavations but jet grouting and uh, deep cement mixing are uh, mainly used uh, as a ground improvement technique rather than excavation support uh, uh, system but there are situations where jet grouting and deep mixing has been used in combination with other methods to support deep excavation so uh, uh, in jet grouting uh, so first we have to drill uh, about 100 to 100 millimeter diameter hole and then high pressure uh, jet is injected and that will loosen the surrounding soil uh, and it, it mix with the surrounding soil which will be mixed with the, uh, the grout uh, and uh, about 0.5 to 2 meter diameter grout column is created using the jet grouting technique the, and jet grouting technique is very widely used and can be very effectively used for seepage control applications in deep excavation so it is uh, the, uh, rather than as an excavation support system it is widely used in uh, seepage control applications uh, in deep excavation uh, and jet grouting is also widely used for underpinning uh, applications as well you can see some pictures uh, so you can, uh, jet grouting uh, has been used in combination with piles to uh, support a deep excavation so few examples are shown here Uh, some typical details are given I am not going to go into the details uh, so jet grouting systems are uh, single fluid double fluid and triple fluid uh, types are uh, now available and the different systems have different advantages and disadvantages so I am not going to uh, go into the details of this, uh, this yeah. but jet grouting plants and equipment uh, then comes uh, the deep mixing deep mixing is also uh, mainly used as a ground improvement technique uh, than uh, an excavation support system but again it is used in combination so two methods are available wet mixing and dry mixing in the deep uh, in deep mixing in situ soil in situ soil is mixed with uh, some hardening agent uh, cement mainly cement and uh, the large diameter columns are created 
so uh, the in the wet mixing method uh, uh, wet slurry is uh, mixed with in situ soil in the dry uh, mixing method dry mixing method is suitable if the surrounding soil contains lot of moisture so in the, in that case uh, a dry uh, uh, um, uh, binder is injected and it is mixed with water and soil to create uh, deep mixing columns so some details are given here uh, I, I, I will uh, skip this uh, to save time uh, the different configurations of deep mixing uh, equipment uh, and deep mixing is very widely used uh, for offshore ground improvement applications yeah uh, if you are going for uh, a deep mixing lot of uh, laboratory testing is required to uh, select the appropriate uh, mix uh, proportions so in situ soil has to be mixed with different uh, uh, the uh, mix proportions of uh, the uh, the binder and the the uh, appropriate consistency has to be uh, selected by doing a lot of laboratory uh, the uh, tests okay uh, uh, the top one uh, uh, top down construction method uh, this this uh, method has been used for uh, the construction of uh, the odell uh, new odell shopping mall uh, in this case the excavation is supported using uh, a diaphragm wall or some kind of uh, a retaining uh, a structure embedded type retaining structure and then the ground flow slab is cast ground flow slab is cast because this uh, ground uh, you can't excavate the entire area this uh, uh, some area has to be used right it, uh, it has to be continuously used during the excavation also so the ground flow area is cast and uh, some opening is uh, is maintained for uh, the uh, carrying out the excavation so uh, after that uh, the excavation is uh, continued up to the next level and these are the piles piles and uh, uh, the final excavation level is uh, shown here with, uh, the, at the top of the pile cap uh, and these are the steel eye sections so steel lie sections are taken all the way up to the uh, the ground floor slab level and these eye sections will be encased in concrete yeah. so the ground floor slab will be supported on uh, the the steel lie sections then you continue the excavation up to the the next level and uh, the uh, the second level slab is cast after that the columns are concreted the same procedure will be continued up to uh, whatever the final excavation depth so special uh, st structural detailing are required at the connections so this method is uh, widely used in highly populated uh, uh, areas where you i mean the, the you you need to continue to use the space at the top you can see uh, some pictures taken uh, during a top down construction uh, the uh, the one slab is cast and they are preparing uh, the columns uh, to be concreted and you can see the opening this opening will continue all the way to the bottom Uh, then uh, if the excavation uh, area is quite large so one can think of using uh, the island method to uh, carry out the deep excavation so in the island method uh, so you have to have uh, an embedded retaining wall to support the excavation and uh, the soil in the excavation is excavated at a slope and this slope will provide some uh, buttress uh, support uh, passive resistance against the movement of the retaining wall 
and you continue the excavation along a slope up to whatever the final excavation depth then the central part of the structure is constructed middle part of the structure and that middle part is used as a prop uh, is used to prop uh, the remaining uh, uh, the uh, while continuing the remaining uh, excavation so this is called the island method right uh, then i would like to uh, discuss a little bit about the different lateral uh, support systems uh, available to uh, prop and anchor the deep excavations uh, i can have uh, the uh, struts breaking struts and horizontal struts diagonal struts so some typical connections uh, details are given here uh, so i'm not going to uh, explain them and uh, uh, in some cases uh, the uh, the struts are supported with hydraulic jacks then by changing the uh, the force in the hydraulic jack we can control the movement of the retaining wall movement of the uh, the the uh, excavation support system that is the wall so uh, in some case the hydraulic jacks are simply uh, connected to this kind of welded uh, sections or in some case uh, the 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 strut consists of telescopic uh, elements like this and uh, the hydraulic jacks are used to control the movement and uh, these are uh, the modern uh, hydraulic strut supports so they come in uh, segments so by uh, connecting different segments we can adjust the length of the support uh, and uh, these uh, large diameter hydraulic strut supports are capable of uh supporting deep excavations uh, up to a span of about 40 50 meters there are cases where uh the hyd hydraulic struts are used to support 50 meter uh, spans without intermediate king force so there are no intermediate supports the the entire hydraulic support uh, strut takes the the lateral load and these uh, hydraulic struts are capable of taking loads up to 5000 kN 5000 kN axial load uh, and uh, they are capable of controlling a wall movement of about up to about 500 mm uh, i have seen uh, this kind of uh, the hydraulic uh, struts being used in the construction of new calendy bridge uh, some deep excavation has been supported using uh, some of the hydraulic struts and you can see uh, some actual uh, pictures of hydraulic struts and these are the the hydraulic uh, jacks this is a teles telescopic uh, segment so by increasing the, the hydraulic force you can control the wall movement So some pictures of uh, some deep excavation supported using uh, hydraulic struts without any intermediate king posts and uh, then comes uh, anchors or tie backs uh, you have dead man type anchors uh, the, some, sometimes piles are used as anchors uh, then uh, soil lay and uh, grouted anchors or helical Uh, anchors are also being used. Uh, you can see uh, an installation of a helical anchor to support a deep excavation supported using uh, sheet piles. One advantage of uh, using uh, helical anchors is uh, the ability of uh, the removing the helical anchor after the uh, the construction. This can be taken out and removed and reused. 
Right. Uh, so with that uh, small introduction to different uh, available uh, different uh, types of uh, deep excavation support systems, I would like to discuss a little bit about uh, some tools uh, that can be used in the design. Uh, and there are uh, different approaches uh, available for analysis and design. Uh, working stress approach is the, the factor of safety approach. Uh, and under the working stress approach also different uh, the codes are using different methods uh, in, in uh, the, the uh, some old uh, codes uh, the factor on, on depth of embedment is used so the depth of embedment is calculated uh, using uh, the limit equilibrium method and the, that depth of embedment is increased by about 20% to uh, maintain the uh, adequate uh, safety. So that is uh, still being used, widely used. Uh, in uh, the BS 8002, uh, uh, factor, uh, the, fa the last method, uh, that is factor on shear strength parameters, both active and passive side. This uh, has been used. Okay. Uh, and these are all uh, limit equilibrium uh, methods. Uh, in the uh, in the new euro code the limit state approach has been proposed so in the limit uh, state approach partial factors are applied against the loads uh, the, it is known as actions in the in the euro code and soil properties and resistance so different partial factors are proposed considering different uh, aspects uh, so the uh, excavation, uh, excavation support systems uh, that are cantilever type, cantilever type support systems or uh, excavation support system with a single level of uh, support uh, can be analyzed uh, using conventional analytical methods like free earth support method and fixed earth support method. Uh, walls with uh, single or multiple level supports can be analyzed using approximate analytical method like PEC method and nowadays finite element analysis is widely used. Uh, I would uh, like to discuss about uh, the finite element analysis a little bit uh, towards the end of this presentation. Uh, some advantages and disadvantages of the analytical methods are shown here. I am not going to uh, discuss this at uh, the same time. Uh, and the different uh, the failure modes that we have to consider in the design are, are shown here. Uh, <coughs> some are due to a soil failure and some are due to uh, the failure of the structural uh, system like failure of the wall or failure of the prop support. And uh, one important failure mode is the, uh, the uh, stability of the excavation against hydraulic failure or piping failure. <coughs> so these are the uh, different failure modes for uh, an embedded uh, type retaining wall supported using anchors. Anchors. So in addition to normal uh, failure modes, uh, we have to worry about the stability of uh, the, uh, the anchor supports and the overall. And uh, this is uh, uh, again important. Uh, the uh, excavation supported using anchors, if the anchors are pre-stressed, there can be a bearing failure also. Okay, because uh, large vertical loads are applied uh, at the bottom of the uh, the retaining wall, bottom of the, uh, the embedded type retaining wall and since the, uh, the width is quite small there can be a bearing failure uh, at the bottom. So, uh, so in addition to all these conventional uh, types of failure modes we have to worry about the bearing failure if the anchors are pre-stressed. Uh, so this is these are the failure modes for soil nail type uh, soil nail supported uh, uh, embedded retaining wall. So I am not going to go into that. Uh, 
uh, approximate earth pressure distributions proposed by Peck are uh, shown here for different types of soils, sand, uh, then uh, the uh, soft to medium type clays and stiff clays. So these uh, earth pressure diagrams can be used to approximately calculate the uh, the uh, the uh, the prop forces, and uh, we can use these earth pressure diagrams to check the stability of uh, the uh, the retaining wall against uh, overturning failure. Uh, then uh, one <coughs> very important uh, uh, the tool that can be used for. Uh, Ensuring the safety of the excavation is the base heave, basal heave. Uh, the factor of safety, a lot of uh, analytical tools are available to uh, evaluate the factor of safety against the basal heave. So uh, this is uh, the uh, for clay type soils. If the soil consists of clay. Uh, the factor of safety against the basal heave is given by uh, this equation and uh, in this uh, analysis it is assumed that uh, the uh, there is uh, the, the wall penetration the penetration of the wall below the formation level below the excavation level is neglected so you whatever the factor of safety calculated here can be considered as quite conservative so it is generally recommended to maintain uh, a factor of safety against the basal heave more than 1.5. So this is again uh, for uh, factor of safety against the basal heave uh, for different uh, uh, H over B ratios. So it, this uh, height is uh, smaller than when the height is smaller than the width, you can modify the previous equation uh, slightly and when there is a very stiff or hard layer uh, at a finite depth then uh, the equation modified as shown here. Similarly for sandy soils also <coughs> factor of safety against uh, the basal beam uh, the equation Someone is. can you please switch off? Doctor Nalin, you can mute all those people. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah. Ah, now okay, right? Yeah, now it is okay. I think. Yeah. So this is uh, this figure is very useful uh, in uh, uh, assessing uh, the stability of uh, deep excavation during the construction stage. <coughs> uh, you, uh, uh, in the y-axis, you can see the normalized uh, lateral wall movement. That lateral wall movement divided by the excavation depth and uh, the x-axis is the factor of safety against the basal heave so it is generally recommended to maintain a basal heave greater than 1.5 so uh, uh, when the excavation is ongoing we can monitor this uh, normalize uh, the lateral wall movement and compare with the uh, the factor of safety against the basal heave. So this can be used as a uh, the uh, control or uh, tool uh, in uh, assessing uh, the stability of the uh, the excavation. Uh, and these figures show uh, the uh, the depth of embedment, the required. Uh, penetration or the depth of embedment to cut off to uh, uh, the seepage. Uh, to prevent hydraulic failure, right? So again, uh, it is recommended to uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, 
have a factor of safety greater than 1.5 against uh, the hydraulic failure so you can see uh, the in the x axis uh, width of the excavation divided by the the uh, the head difference the water table drawdown so uh, and let's say you want to have maintain a factor of safety of 1.5 uh, then by referring to the appropriate curves you can see that these dash lines uh, represent loose sand if the soil consists of loose sand and these solid lines are for dense sand uh, and we can uh, estimate the required depth of penetration to maintain a factor of safety of 1.5 against hydraulic failure by referring to this diagram and this this diagram uh, can be used if uh, the depth to uh, the bedrock or uh, uh, an impermeable layer is uncertain or unknown. If the depth to the impervious or impermeable layer is uh, known, uh, then we can refer to this figure. So basically the same x and y axis uh, it can get an idea about the required depth of penetration to prevent uh, the, uh, the hydraulic failure. And this is again uh, a very useful tool in the planning stage. This figure x axis gives uh, the stiffness of the uh, excavation support system. The EW is the modulus of elasticity of the wall material, uh, whatever the wall material. IW is the, uh, the second moment of area per unit out of plane length of the uh, the wall H is the uh, the uh, spacing of the supports vertical distance between support levels it's the average uh, average spacing between support levels uh, uh, in the excavation support system so uh, we can calculate this value and uh, the gamma H O C U is uh, the unrained shear strength of uh, soil of clay. This figure is developed for clay type soils. We can get an idea about the likely deformation of the wall. Likely deformation of the wall. Movements uh, generally less than 25 or between 25 to 75 and so on can get an idea. Uh, so it's a very useful tool during the planning stage of the excavation uh, we can select uh, the, uh, the stiffness of the wall the spacing all these can be uh, i mean uh, adjusted uh, for more detailed analysis during the planning stage by referring to this figure and this is proposed by peg so depending on uh, the normalized settlement this settlement over uh, the depth of excavation and this is the distance from the excavation so he proposed three zones one two and three zone one zone two and zone three uh, so uh, if the uh, soil the in the excavation is sand or hard soft to hard clay uh, mainly stiff soil with uh, 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 average workmanship so uh, he proposed that uh, the uh, settlement profile with the uh, distance from the excavation would be something given by uh, this uh, this line so for very soft to soft soils uh, it is given by this so the the uh, settlement and uh, the uh, sorry uh, the settlement and the distance from the excavation the variation would fall into zone three in such case very soft to soft clay so a uh, lot of studies have been carried out to check the validity of this uh, the diagram and it has been modified several times uh, this is uh, based on this is a modification done based on uh, field uh, 
um, uh, monitoring data in uh, Chicago, uh, around Chicago area. So they propose these three zones to be like this after uh, uh, carrying out some analysis, zone 1, 2 and 3. Uh, the PEX uh, regions have been modified. Uh, this is another uh, useful figure. So it says this again for uh, clay excavation in mainly clay type soils. Uh, maximum ground settlement is y axis is the maximum ground settlement, x axis is the lateral deformation, maximum wall movement. So, the in the worst case scenario, maximum ground settlement is equal to the maximum wall movement for most of the case. If the, uh, the excavation is mainly carried out in clay type soils. So this uh, uh, I mean, uh, figure uh, gives uh, a method for calculating the settlement away from the excavation. So it is approximated by the settlement profile. The ground settlement profile is approximated by a parabola like uh, given in the equation. So this uh, equation can be used to estimate the the, the settlement uh, away from the excavation. So I am not going to go into the details. Some factors are being proposed for the workmanship and the construction difficulty. The mainly uh, they are, I mean, for average type workmanship and average type uh, construction difficulty, you can take these factors as one. So it's mainly uh, it's like a, a, a parabola, parabolic uh, variation of settlement. <coughs> So, uh, so uh, with that I would like to uh, uh, discuss a little bit about uh, the finite element analysis because nowadays finite element analysis has been widely used uh, in the design of deep excavations. <coughs> so uh, three, I mean ideally speaking uh, deep excavations are three dimensional in nature but uh, three dimensional analysis is quite uh, time consuming and for normal design work it is not feasible. Therefore, uh, two dimensional idealization is used, widely used, 2D, 2D analysis is widely carried out uh, for the analysis and the design of uh, deep excavation, geotechnical analysis. <coughs> so uh, in the 2D, I am talking here, I am talking about the 2D uh, analysis, uh, finite element analysis. So uh, the, the, some general steps involved in the analysis are listed here. Uh, <clears throat> first we have to idealize the problem into 2D. Uh, you have to select the uh, dimensions, the soil, we have to identify the soil layers, external loads, what are the structures uh, on the retained side and so on. <clears throat> uh, and then we have to select the appropriate models and input parameters. This is the most difficult part, selecting the input parameters. So if you input rubbish, you will get rubbish as the resource. So uh, this is the most difficult uh, part uh, in the finite element analysis, that is giving the appropriate input parameters. <coughs> so then uh, we have to uh, the, uh, induce the correct boundary conditions create the mesh, then uh, calculate the initial stresses before doing any construction, what are the initial stresses of the existing ground, then we have to simulate the construction sequence and the results has to be interpreted in the right geotechnical and structural context. So, uh, two, uh, Methods are available for the idealization of 3D problems into 2D, uh, plane strain idealization and axisymmetry idealization as shown here. Uh, the plane strain idealization is used if uh, the vertical cross sections, vertical cross sections uh, taken parallel uh, uh, to the, uh, the problem are identical, quite identical. <coughs> axis symmetry idealization is used if the problem is symmetric about an axis. 
like circular excavation you can use axisymmetry idealization rectangular type excavations a plain strain idealization can be used uh, some one example is shown here. This is an actual project. Uh, the already this is already completed now. Uh, the structure is already being constructed. So uh, this has been idealized using uh, plain strain idealization, and you can see uh, the different section for the analysis. We are going yeah, to this entire problem. This is a three-dimensional problem. You can see here with multi multiple levels of excavation. <coughs> so multiple levels of excavation. Uh, so we have to select different sections, plain strain, but we have to say select different sections for the analysis considering excavation depth. Uh, the support conditions, soil conditions, and groundwater conditions, right? So, by considering uh, the, the subsurface conditions, uh, the external loads, uh, the depth of ex excavation, and the groundwater conditions, we have selected these sections for the analysis. So, uh, and this is a very wide excavation. Therefore, in the entire section, let's like say for example, section AA cannot be analyzed at once because it's quite wide compared to the depth. So, uh, therefore, this section is divided into left hand side and right hand side. So, two sections were analyzed separately. So, plain strain but different sections were analyzed. Uh, the uh, external loads uh, as a general recommendation uh, uh, if you have structures on the retained side right on the retained side a general recommendation is to use a surcharge uh, of about 10 to 20 depending on the importance of the the structure uh, you can think of using a, a value between 10 to 20 per flow <coughs> Uh, per flow uh, as the surcharge on the retain side. The point loads, if there are point loads, they have to convert them into a line load uh, for two dimensional analysis. Uh, and so, uh, different the types of walls you, uh, in the 2D finite element analysis, you have to idealize, I mean, different types of. Uh, wall using a plate element plate type element uh, the idealization of different uh, types of retaining walls into plate elements are explained here so i'm not going to go into the other uh, details so the uh, for c compiles uh, the uh, the cross sectional area of the plate and the second moment of area of the plate can be calculated by given the, these equations so uh, I will uh, not go into the details of this. Uh, then uh, different lateral support systems, uh, anchored support, uh, uh, anchor supported walls or props supported struct supported walls. Uh, we can model these anchors or props using uh, the different available uh, the different elements available in the finite element software. So, uh, for uh, prop supports, uh, strut supports, uh, the uh, node to node anchor elements are available in, uh, in most of the finite element software. So, you connect one node to another node. Or if this uh, end is fixed, this end can be uh, assumed as relatively fixed and if, if it doesn't move we can even think of using a fixed end support uh, as the anchor support <coughs> and uh, this is uh, about uh, the effective length of the fixed end anchor uh, the distance from the wall to the king post can be used as the effective length of the fixed end anchor and this is about the horizontal spacing of anchors 
So we have to input these details uh, in the finite element because we are carrying out a two dimensional uh, analysis. Uh, the model, uh, the boundaries. <coughs> so we have to select the boundaries sufficiently away from uh, the excavation area, excavation region. So it is generally recommended to maintain a gap of about 1.5 to 2 times whatever the height of the uh, the retaining wall, uh, the embedded retaining wall uh, to the boundary to avoid any boundary effects. So similar for the other side as well. So this is again uh, uh, another example. This, these are taken from this uh, the Capital Twin Peaks project, the different sections taken for the analysis and you can see how uh, the boundaries are selected. Uh, if the excavation is a is symmetric, symmetrical excavation, the so symmetrical means uh, I mean uh, the loading, groundwater conditions, subsurface conditions, everything has to be symmetrical. In such case, the line of symmetry can be used as a the, as a boundary because uh, through the line of symmetry, la no lateral deformation takes place. Right, everything is symmetrical, so no lateral deformation. Uh, vertical movement can take place through the line of symmetry therefore we can use it as a boundary and uh, about the selection of the material I told you that this is the most challenging part uh, one major input to uh, the finite element programs is the E value of soil the elastic modulus of soil and uh, here you can see the de different definitions for the soil E values because the soil stress strain behavior is highly nonlinear. So which value uh, should we use? Uh, e naught is the, uh, the initial stiffness that is uh, also known as the small strain stiffness. Uh, for dynamic analysis uh, we can think of using E naught uh, if the strains are quite small. For most of the general applications, E50 is used for, uh, for the analysis of the soil behavior. E50 means uh, the 50% uh, of the peak stress, that is this point, is uh, uh, joined with the, the origin and the gradient of that line is taken as E50. So soil behavior, although it is highly nonlinear, is approximated by the C50. So that value is widely used as the elastic modulus of soil for settlement analysis and so on. Uh, <clears throat> and this one is called E unload reload value because when soil is unloaded, it is over consolidated uh, and, and it becomes, it shows a stiffer behavior. So this E unload reload value is shown there and for finite element analysis because most of the areas in, in an excavation will be subjected to unloading during uh, a deep excavation, it is recommended to use E unload reload value. So uh, the same is explained in detail here, you can see that in, this is a, a typical uh, deep excavation problem. Uh, you can see the passive side is unloaded uh, because of the removal of the overburden and active side is also unloaded because of the lateral movement of the wall. So soil will be sub mainly subjected to unload. Therefore it is recommended to use this E unload reload value. Generally speaking E unload reload value is 2 to 5 times uh, uh, larger than the E50. <clears throat> right. So, uh, as a recommendation, I can uh, suggest uh, to use at least two times E50 or three uh, times E50 uh, as the E value of uh, the uh, excavation problems. Uh, then about the interfaces, uh, because. Uh, you know, uh, we have a structural element that is the embedded retaining wall and you have uh, soil. So interface, uh, we have to introduce interface elements and reduce the shear strength along the interface. The interface strength reduction uh, 
uh, coefficients are shown here and these are quite uh, typical values uh, <coughs> and regarding uh, the modeling of uh, the, uh, the ground water condition so uh, if the entire subsurface is permeable if the entire subsurface is permeable seepage can take place underneath the retaining wall uh, assuming that the wall is impermeable so wall is impermeable seepage takes place underneath the wall so in, in such case we have to carry out uh, the ground water flow analysis <coughs> like the, as shown here if the wall is permeable like uh, in the case of solder piles uh, solder pile retaining walls or uh, retaining walls with uh, like concrete plugging uh, in, in such case the wall may be permeable so in the uh, so this kind, kind of seepage can take place so if the wall is uh, designed as a cut off system where the wall is uh, wall penetrates into an impermeable layer and the wall itself is impermeable then uh, on both sides, active and passive sides, static water le levels uh, prevail. So, static water pressure can develop uh, in such case. So, by uh, uh, considering the appropriate uh, the pore water condition, we have to model it appropriately in the finite element uh, um, analysis. So, uh, I think I have. Uh, so come to the end of the first part uh, about uh, the uh, introduction and uh, the analysis and general guidelines on analysis and design. So once uh, we have the finite element results, we have to interpret them in the right context. Uh, lateral deformation, uh, anticipated settlement, the structural uh, the, the forces, bending moments and shear forces uh, along the wall can be obtained maximum axial forces on lateral supports can be obtained through finite element analysis then the earth pressure distribution mobilized earth pressure distribution and forward pressure distribution can be obtained through finite element analysis we can use make use of this for conventional uh, factor of safety calculation as well and one very important uh, aspect is monitoring monitoring uh, uh, records must be used for validation of the finite element analysis and for the calibration so for the validation and calibration purpose monitoring records are very very useful so i am going to uh, talk about this uh, in more detail in the uh, the next session so uh, i think i have come uh, to the end of uh, today's so from next week i'd like to discuss about different uh, groundwater control systems how to select uh, the different systems and uh, what uh, should we do if the things are not going as expected uh, contingency plans uh, remedial measures and those details will be discussed in the next class so uh, thank you very much for attending Thank you, Dr. Nalin, for your very informative uh, presentation. Uh, uh, now we will have the question time. Uh, we can raise, the audience can raise the question and they can use the chat box. Actually, I'm operating here with, without power and I have certain difficulties, but I will go through first the chat box. Uh, let me see that what are the questions raised here. question is uh, in case if it is uh, required to carry out a deep excavation in peat soil then how to select earthwork support system the question is from D. A. Jayavardhana yes so actually uh, the selection of uh, the uh, excavation uh, support system it depends on the depth of the excavation the condition of soil I think if it is PD soil, I expect that the ground water table is very close to uh, the surface. So, uh, uh, what 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 is? Do you have any idea about the excavation depth? Yeah. 
somewhere around uh, 10 meters so in in that case uh, i would recommend a diaphragm wall okay yeah Thank uh, you. May, may I add a little bit on that, uh, Dr. Nalin? Yes. Uh, if we have very soft kind of PT soil, it may be a very difficult thing to do the trench, trench excavation because uh, to stabilize the uh, soil during the installation of the diaphragm wall. Uh, uh, what do you think about that? I, I feel see, something like sheet pile or something uh, similar to that or even the Grout in jet grout in may be not very effective, but uh, what is your uh, response on that uh, stability during the installation of the uh, uh, shoring system? Yes, uh, I agree with you, Mr. Sabha. Uh, uh, panel excavation uh, can be difficult in PT soils because, uh, particularly, uh, stabilization. Uh, of the panels, uh, the excavation using bentonite would be quite difficult, uh, I agree. Uh, but the uh, sheet piles, the problem is uh, 10 meter excavation. For 10 meter excavation, uh, you, sheet piles, I think, uh, is not feasible because uh, of uh, uh, the stability problems and you have to weld the sections and so on. <coughs> uh, How how stiff uh, is the how soft or stiff is the soil? Do you have any idea about the CU value? Unbrained shear strength of the soil. Is it very soft? Very soft. It will be very soft uh, like that, uh, doctor. Okay. Uh, it's very soft material. Um, Ten meter deep excavation, right? Yes. Either. For what kind of application it is? Uh, actually, this is not a real uh, scenario. Just okay. uh, we are uh, these days uh, doing some uh, kind of uh, work in development uh, here. For house housing, uh, while investigation has yeah. been done. I, I feel that you may need some secondary, uh, you know, uh, sub excavation support system in in such case. In such case, yeah, yeah, not just one. And also, it all depends on the soil profile. Also, I mean the. Now, if the peat is uh, existing, that means the groundwater table also very shallow. And maybe whatever the shoring system, you have to ex uh, extend it to the permeable layer so, or the bedrock. Uh, it is a very really tricky situation. I think uh, we are, unless you study every aspect of that, it is very difficult to predict one particular system. Yeah. I just propose this sheet piling because it can be uh, or, or sent without much disturbance to the neighborhood because it, uh, because of the soft soil and also it may be possible i mean the with, with difficulty some kind of second pile also but uh, as dr nalin uh, indicated uh, it all depends on the softness of the soil actually but diaphragm wall may not be possible because uh, you you expose a large excavator surface during the installation of uh, uh, shoring system, but uh, piling, of course, uh, uh, you you can reduce that risk. I know that. That's why I'm, I, I I I I I think something like sheet pile or or second pile may work. Uh, but if the uh, PT PT soil is has some kind of uh, strength, uh, even the, the grouting with uh, some kind of shoulder system. Uh, you know, sheet pile system may work, but uh, anyway, it is very difficult to predict without knowing all the factors and uh, 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 all the condition at the site. Yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, so then uh, the, the next next uh, response is uh, 
Mr. Gates, uh, this is not a question. He says, thank you very much for this type of session, knowledge sharing to the engineers and professionals. A special thanks to SLGS. You are welcome, uh, Mr. Kate. Uh, Prabhat, to everyone, could you please share the presentation? That I think Dr. Nalin has to decide on that. I will do it. Then, uh, Mr. Our engineer Dilan, uh, 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 he, he, thank you for useful presentation by Dr. Nalin and SLGS. In practice, the bilinear Mohr-Coulomb model is commonly used, though it is generally not recommended for detailed finite element analysis. Are there any other soil models that we can use, and what information is required from the soil study for them? Number two, do we need to consider EQ loading? Uh, stiffness modification factor. Loading and no stiffness modification factors when modeling a retaining wall uh, yeah uh, regarding your first question uh, are there any other soil models uh, yes uh, in other countries they are widely using the hardening soil model like parabolic uh, uh, the uh, soil models uh, so in it can model the nonlinear behavior more accurately uh, and it is uh, suitable for uh, stiff soils as well as soft soils so uh, the, uh, the nonlinear uh, soil models but the problem is uh, such models require a lot of parameters so uh, my rec my idea is in sri lanka we don't have uh, i mean advanced laboratory facilities to determine those parameters accurately so rather than using a very accurate model with a uh, lot of uncertain parameters, I think it, I mean, it's better to use uh, a, a less accurate or uh, I mean, uh, co conservative approximate model with uh, more certain parameters. Uh, so that is my uh, opinion. I, I'm talking from the, uh, the Sri Lankan context. So in other countries, uh, those are available like you know the stiffness uh, parameters like the soil modulus E value varies with the the stress level. So that is uh, given by uh, a parameter called M. So this M value uh, there are I mean I mean in literature some values are given. Uh, but uh, are they really applicable to the residual type soils in Sri Lanka? Still, we, ha we don't have any uh, evidence on that. So, therefore, uh, my suggestion, although there are advanced models, uh, I mean, they are still, uh, we don't ha have, uh, you know, advanced laboratory facilities to determine the required parameters for using them. Uh, Dr. Nalin, may I also contribute something on that? Yeah. Uh, actually, I mean, the, we are talking about very sophisticated analysis, but uh, our data is very, very poor. Actually, we don't, uh, I mean, you know, I am talking about Sri Lankan context. Yeah. We don't spend much uh, resources to find out correct uh, parameters. And also, we have to keep in mind that soil is... Uh, I mean, not the man-made material. It, it, lot of things will vary within the site, and we can't go with 100% accuracy in our analytical uh, procedure. And because of that, it is, uh, I mean, not like structure. If, I mean, if you talk about structures, we are talking about all man-made uh, construction, and you know exactly, you can control exactly the the material. But when it comes to the underground situation, it is all naturally made or god made and in that situation uh, your anal analysis also should match with uh, the accuracy of your data and as as very correctly dr nalin indicated uh, we don't have certain facilities to, to find out uh, very accurate uh, uh, soil parameters and uh, mostly people are very very reluctant to spend much uh, resources or money for that kind of uh, 
uh, investigations and uh, uh, because of that uh, i mean the, that is one side of that and also even we go with very very accurate uh, kind of uh, analytical uh, uh, tools you may not get desired results because uh, all everything will depend on your input data uh, if if you are input data is not accurate whatever i mean you may not get uh, what is uh, desired i mean what is expected that is my my comment my small comment on that yeah, yeah. i totally agree with you uh, do we need to consider eq means you, i i guess you mean earthquake loading right yes yes yes, yes. 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 Thank you. so uh, so most of the deep excavations in sri lanka we don't consider earthquake loading because they are of temporary nature uh, and uh, i mean they are not a i mean uh, in a very a seismic region so we don't consider the earthquake loading uh, during deep excavations none of uh, what what i know uh, then uh, the stiffness modification factors when modeling uh, the uh, the retaining wall uh, that also we don't do yes. yeah yeah uh. Yeah, Doctor Narayan. I think I think you are correct. I mean, we are considering very short period, and also Sri Lanka is not a very earthquake-prone country. I mean, the, it may be not not very very uh, logical to consider earthquake loading for that kind of temporary structure. And also, uh, uh, I am not very sure what you mean by stiffness modification. Uh, can can you explain, Nilan? Uh, what do you mean by this different modification uh, sure yeah, generally um, um, i mean um, for any reason if we are uh, to expect a certain uh, uh, maybe cracking in the uh, diaphragm wall due to maybe unpredictable lateral loads or uh, you know any other effect um, some some um, reviewers generally ask for what is the uh, uh, stiffness modification that we are using um, and generally, they, they expect around 30%, but um, I, I have, I, in, in uh, reports that I have done, I have got away with using 15%, but it's always something that uh, reviewers ask when they, when they look at a, a, a retaining wall or a diaphragm wall uh, design. Yeah, I, what my, my, I mean, the using track section may not be a very, very uh, prudent thing actually and uh, also i mean that you have to i mean that is why i'm telling you again now uh, what dr nalin shows about this uh, in conventional or traditional method when, method when you calculate the earth pressure i mean that there are so many approximations you do and and redistribution and all that depend on the stiffness also i mean that's why i'm telling that you have to use the stiffness whatever the stiffness not only the uh, bending members, even the the anchors and also the props, struts, uh, all depend on the soil again, soil pressure. Uh, I mean, the movement of uh, the soil will uh, vary the uh, earth pressure distribution. That is the main thing you have to uh, consider in your uh, analysis. What is your reaction, uh, Dr. Nalin? Yeah, in my opinion also, since we are using conservative soil properties and in the idealization uh, of the subsurface conditions also, we do a lot of uh, approximations which are on the conservative side. So, uh, uh, lateral earth pressure that we calculate are quite on the high side than what is actually uh, expected in the site uh, at the, the site. So therefore, I, I also agree with the uh, uh, Sabandu. So we don't have to do that for the wall. It's a uh, lot of conservative assumptions are there. Yeah. Let's go to the next question. Uh, K. Salshana. PT acidic sheet piles may get corroded. Yeah, I agree, but. Uh, uh, for the for the short term now shoring is a short term business actually 
and also sometimes you will take uh, seat pile out uh, if there is a possibility i don't think it is a big problem and also if you have the for the permanent uh, purposes you can uh, uh, apply some odd but bituminous now if you see wellavatha canal they are used to sheet pile uh, wall to for the canal embankment protection and that that wall is there for last i think 15 20 years we can't see much corrosion in that because of the uh, corrosion protection they have done there and also i mean the if it is temporary thing i don't think it will be a big issue but it is your opinion dr nali yeah uh, one of my concerns is also this uh, corrosion but as as uh, sabandh said uh, for temporary applications it's not a issue and uh, this uh, permanent sheet piles are quite working quite well uh, you know in uh, for most of the applications i know yeah the next question from uh, in engineer uh, in, in andana uh, abhay surya uh this question is is there any guide to select embankment slope cut slope without any support i think this has been touched by dr nalin at the very beginning can you elaborate a little bit on that so oh, yeah yeah in the very beginning i talked about open cut excavations uh, there i presented some uh, some general guidelines but those guidelines are actually uh, developed for excavations less than 6 meters that i have to uh, say the uh, excavations greater than 6 meters there are no i mean standard guidelines we have to do an analysis and uh, uh, decide on the appropriate uh, the slope angles and uh, and uh, the other condition is uh, i mean no surcharge is considered uh, at the top of the crest you need to and what i say is uh, we have to we have to be with the careful so, uh, your voice is not very clear loud okay uh, i will go to the next question by uh, engineer what information would be used are reasonable ground angles how available as provided <coughs> Hello. Yeah, I, actually, I don't know uh, about uh, this uh, movable type of anchors are used in Sri Lanka, but uh, in literature and also in uh, I mean case studies, I have seen uh, application of those. Uh, but at the moment, I think the main problem in Sri Lanka. that uh, we don't have proper law i mean if you want to go to the next law uh, man's property the he can simply object that i mean there is no way uh, you can uh, uh, i mean uh, go i mean uh, administer person in legal shape unless he gives his consent but in a uh, country like germany they have some kind of guidelines and also Uh, they, they appoint two parties will appoint uh, technical person and they will uh, discuss it and uh, decide on those things now in uk that is the normal practice actually uh, but in sri lanka we don't have that kind of tradition or no? we don't have that kind of uh, practice uh, available and because of that nobody normally what happen the land uh, owner will object to uh, install your anchors in this property then in that case you may have to go with internal strain that will be not a very construction friendly uh, method <clears throat> but uh, that is my experience anything else dr nal uh, hello can you hear me yeah yeah i can hear you yeah uh, the helical anchors are available in sri lanka uh, that i know so it has never been used okay 
have they used in Sri Lanka? For, uh, sure? for shoring, no, no, not, not yet. They are using for, uh, the, at the moment they are using helical anchors to support uh, tower foundations, to enhance the uplift capacity of tower foundations uh, they are using for one CEB project. Uh, and, uh, and they say that it can be used as an alternative for soil nails and uh, ground anchors, uh, but uh, it has not been used. But in other countries, they, 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 are, they have used it. Do they need special equipment to... Uh, uh, no, actually, uh, equipment are minimum. Uh, it can be attached to uh, the excavator. The torque motor can be attached to the excavator. Yeah, we have some occasions, uh, Mr. GSK Kariyosam, if boulders are encountered during the deep excavation, how to deal with such situation? Uh, deep excavation mean during during excavation or uh, during the installation of the uh, the wall? Uh, I think I think you may be asking that part, no? that is a big part. Not the excavation, of course, you can uh, deal with boulders. That is not a problem. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, during the installation of uh, uh, storing system, it may be a problem. Yes, it's a problem. So particularly during the installation of sleep piles, it's, it's an issue. Yeah, my experience, Dr. Naveen, uh, and uh, are you awesome? That in uh, yes, Central sir. Bank we had this kind of problem. We had boulders, and uh, yeah, because we had a second by wall and uh, boulders was a problem. But what we did was, uh, if it is very shallow, we excavate it and remove it and refill it and did the uh, <coughs> board by wall or, or second by wall. When it is very deep uh, and also very big, uh, we drilled through those boulders, but it's a very uh, and you need four cutters uh, and also it's a very slow process but we did that so so what happened when in, in that case uh, seepage maybe take place uh, to, through this uh, interface we are meeting the uh, second pile to the rock rock uh, do we have do we have to do any chemical anchoring or something no no we didn't have that kind of uh, big problem uh, but we did but uh, uh, but you can do some local uh, treatment, you can do some treating or even you can look out in the uh, upstream side of the boat pile wall. Uh, but all depend on the situation, depend on the soil condition also. Now, if you have like, the kind of soil, it can be controlled very easily, but if it's that kind of soil, maybe you can you have to do some kind of doubt in, uh, in between the piles. Also. There are, uh, I mean, those things are apparent, it's not a very new thing, but binding boulders, it's a very difficult task to hear for, for any kind of uh, uh, storing system. And seed piling may be not even seed piling may not be possible. The only thing what we can do is we can, uh, if it is very deep, we can uh, dry up to that point, actual storing system, and excavate and do some kind of local treatment uh, about the soil and as well as to uh, avoid the seepage also how to know that kind of Anything else, uh, Doctor Ali? Yeah, let me do this. Uh, if you, I mean, if you are carrying out a deep excavation in a, in a boat or seven, uh, it's better to avoid anchors. You to go for uh, support. Yeah, we go to the next one. Uh, Udara, can we model the soil as soil stream? In string constant, in finite element of the R, like we said, we specifically, specifically want to design structural elements of any wall, uh, SOL or King Post stone. If so, so, if so, how to design soil K value? Oh, yes, that, that's possible. That, that's so, SAP so, 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 can use for modeling. Uh, like you are modeling a pile, so it can be used. And K value, the horizontal, horizontal spread constant uh, can be used. Yeah, I, uh, yeah actually, yeah. Also, I mean, instead of using uh, finite element models, you can use the uh, string coefficient also 
uh, in analysis of uh, this kind of wall fixture. Any any comment, Doctor? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then, uh, Mr. Sainaka, his, uh, his question is, which are the percentages is very uh, Okay, then, uh, Mr. Samit Vijayavardhana, in case of, Samit Vijayavardhana, in case of leakages, water mix with soil particles or water leakages of deep excavation supported system, terminal system, in this token, but are the best possible Solution to prevent those leaks. Yeah, I, I will be touching on this in the next presentation. But to, to answer your question, now uh, the first thing you are supposed to do is to stop the leakage. A small, very small leakage uh, can be, uh, let's say, if it can be managed uh, without doing a lot of uh, additional work. Uh, it, 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 I mean, uh, it can be. Uh, Attended, but the say the sandy soil, if sudden uh, leakage takes place, that can be uh, a nightmare. So uh, the first thing to be done is to uh, stop the hurting or you know, the sudden uh, water movement by using a cloth, gunny bag, sand bag. So try to cover the area with uh, the, the, some uh, fabric. Uh, and so and so on, and try to control the sea and then, then cover the area with uh, sandbag to prevent the loss of wind particles. Then you have to draw from behind to stop uh, this uh, permanent wind. Once uh, the sea page is all is controlled to sufficient extent, you can start constructing a uh, short sweep uh, wall from uh, outside. Okay, Dr. Nalin, uh, I, I will, uh, uh, one more question uh, from Prabhat, is it possible to replace SPD, I don't know what is SPD, uh, cut, off, cut, off, cut off all of earth? Yeah, soil cement bentonite, yeah. yeah. What? Uh, I think SPD means soil cement bentonite cut off. Okay. So using jagged out in the bed, I think it's possible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's possible. Right, I, I think uh, we have come to the end of the discussion. Uh, we, don't, we don't have any more uh, questions, and also it is now almost 8.30. And we had a very, very fruitful, uh, I mean, a very uh, uh, informative uh, presentation, and also very, very presented and uh, very prepared slide. Uh, and I, I think I must be very thankful to Dr. Malin for his effort to do a uh, very good presentation for the Jordan of the society. And also, I must be thankful to all the participants. I think we are nearly 100 participants at the beginning. And also, we must understand we have lots of power cuts, and even I am operating with, uh, with uh, uh, so no electricity. Uh, and I am sure that because of that, a lot of people have not have, have lost their opportunity in this uh, our presentation. However, thank you again for the participants and also uh, 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 Dr. Professor Udeni who, uh, and uh, Akshala uh, and, and finally uh, our resource person uh, Dr. Nahim Antilla for your presentation. And our next presentation will be on uh, next month by Dr. Nalin. I think we will discuss further about the preparation uh, and we will discuss it further in the next month of our forum. Thank you very much and good night for everybody. Thank you very much uh, for the participants and thank you very much for the very active discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Nalin. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Nalin. Thank you, Dr. Nalin. Thank you, Dr. Nalin.